Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Nick, and in today's video, we are going to add a variant selector to the collections page. So how are we gonna build this? Well, first we're gonna add a Shopify section file uh, so that we can add it via the customizer. And then we are going to add some HTML, some CSS, a little bit of liquid, and a lot of JavaScript. And I'm gonna go through that JavaScript the best I can to try to help you understand what's going on. Uh, we're also gonna utilize the Shopify variant meta fields to store our data. And this video comes courtesy of subscriber Samya004. Uh, she requested to see a tutorial on this subject. If you have something you'd like to add to your store and wanna see how you can build it, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and then leave a comment of what it is you'd like to see. So what is this gonna look like? Let's take a look. So here I've added to this preview theme and I'm just on the home page here where we have this featured product section. So you can kind of compare, this is like the standard Shopify collection, at least on Dawn. And this is what I have created here. So you can see that uh, we have this collections right here. We only have three. You can change the variant right here. And I don't have a, another image for this one, but you can see you can toggle this. And then um, we also list the sizes below. And if I add this white uh, sleeve t-shirt to the cart, it will successfully add there. So let's dig into the code. So first thing we wanna do is look at our products and make sure that we have the variants set up correctly. Now I'm gonna to come to my products here in the Shopify admin. And I just have test data in here, but I've added this short sleeve t-shirt so that I can have a product with real variants. And you'll see if I come down here, I've added two variants. So I have one for color and one for size. This order does matter. So if you're following this tutorial and you have color and size or other variants, uh, make sure that you have your color ordered first and then your size second um, because it's crucial to the code or otherwise you're just going to have to adjust the code to fit your needs. Um, so I've added three colors and I've added three sizes to every single one of these variants, which is, gives us a total of nine variants if you do the combo of each size and each color. I'm going to show you kind of how this was a roadblock for me while I was building this actually in my first attempt. But once you have this product set up with variants um, uh, and just make sure that they have available inventory, now uh, we can go to the code and start looking at what's happening there. Now that I'm in my preview theme and I'm ready to edit some code, I am going to come to this sections directory right here. I'm gonna add a section and you can call it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call it new collection list. Now you're going to want to grab all this code from the link in my description. It goes to my GitHub and you can copy all this code at once if you'd like. I'm going to paste it section by section just to try to like talk about what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top and I've copied the styles and I'm just going to paste that all here. Now I don't really want to get into this. Feel free to dig in if you'd like. You may have to adjust a few things like if you want to change the size or whatever, you can do that from these first few styles here, setting, you know, like the things you'd like. This is also not the recommended way to do a font. This is just so I can import a Google font easily, but I'd recommend adding it to your theme the correct way. But I'm gonna close this down, shrink it so I don't have to see it, and then I'm gonna start adding some code. Now, um, this is gonna be the only liquid, really, other than the schema that we're gonna add to this code. Um, and I'm gonna give just a, this div a class. I'm gonna call it custom collection and then I'm also going to give it an ID of product collection like so. Okay, cool. Now, um, the reason we're only going to have this here is everything else is going to be inserted via JavaScript. So we're going to have a lot of JavaScript that's doing a lot of stuff and then we're going to update the DOM and then everything's going to go in between this code right here, this opening and closing tag. It's just going to be inserted via JavaScript. So now that we have that, we can come in here and we can add a script. All right, so I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of code because there's a lot, and then I'm gonna try my best to like walk through it. All right, so I pasted that in there. Let's start from the top. Okay, so I have this variable called background colors, and I added a little note here so you can see. This is something I, I've known, but I've forgotten, and I need to be reminded occasionally. But you cannot grab meta fields from JavaScript. It has to be through the liquid code. So what I mean by that is, like, if I got the products like I do here, and I add it to a JavaScript array, 
I can't go through that array and grab the meta field from them. I need to grab the meta field from liquid quick. Uh, from the liquid code itself because liquid is server side javascript is happening on the browser so what's happening here is i have this empty object and i'm going through the collection which we're going to add to the schema here momentarily but we're going through and looping through these products and looping through the variants and then i'm grabbing the meta field that we're going to create for the color value and then i'm adding it to this object so that I can then look it up later in my JavaScript. So it's kind of like a temporary storage kind of thing going on. The other thing is I have this original products variable, which again is getting the products, and this is where we are storing it for our JavaScript so that we can loop through it. And then we slice it so that it's the length that we specify that's gonna be a schema, a schema setting because you may wanna display like only three or four at a time, or maybe you wanna display like 20, right? So we want to be, make sure we support both options. Okay. So now this code gets a little bit hairy. So try to uh, stick with me if you can. So this is grabbing our uh, products from the collection and making it so that we can have it uh, accessible via JavaScript here. And then we're going to loop through those. And this will be easier to see actually if I just log this out so that you can get an idea of what it looks like. So I've added a log here. Uh, we won't be able to see this until after we add a collection through the customizer, uh, but then I will point this out and we will come back to this code and I hope it will make a little bit more sense because it's hard to explain without being able to see the data structure. All right, and then after we get the products, so we have like the data that we want, we, this is, these are all the products of the collection we wanna display. We are then using um, this main function right here, create product element, to create the actual HTML that we're gonna use. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that it's actually called um, down here, create product element. And all we're doing is we're just looping through each product we wanna display, and we're grabbing that HTML, and then it's updated via the DOM. So if we go back up to this function, You'll see what we're doing, creating some elements, and then using JavaScript, we are going through and just adding some attributes and whatnot. So we wanna make sure we add the correct images, we add the product hand so that we can navigate to it successfully, we're adding you know, the price, et cetera, et cetera. And then you'll notice here, we are doing some looping through of the variants. So this is the, this, these two parts right here, very important. So we're looping through the variants if we have variants, and um, you'll notice this default title. Again, this will make more sense when we see the log here in a moment, but it is to make sure that we're only showing variants that are like real variants. So after we add each variant, we're looking up the background color. You'll see right here, we're referencing that object we created up here, and that is so that we can store the correct background color for each variant. Um, that was the whole purpose of it. Originally, I had this different. I was just using the option one value um, from the mirror variant itself. Okay, and then we have this right here. And this is checking for product sizes, which again, will make more sense here in a moment when I show it. But this is if we're showing colors and a size. Well, then we can make sure we display this correctly so it shows different sizes that are available. If I was going to change a couple things, you have more time to spend on this, I would recommend probably not inserting this initially via JavaScript, like you could add it via liquid and then just have event listener set up in JavaScript. But this seems to work out pretty well. We're also using meta fields for the colors. I would probably recommend doing that as well for the sizes or what other kind of variants that you wanna add. Um, so that's something that you could think about doing as well. Then we have this add to cart function. And as it sounds, this is to make sure that we add to cart. And then once it's successful, I'm just navigating to the cart page. But of course you could do whatever. You may just wanna update your cart drawer or whatever to show the added product there. And then here we have this add to cart listener to make sure that we're calling um, correctly, make sure we're grabbing the correct variant because right, if we're moving through the variants, you wanna make sure you're adding the right color or size. And then we also have an event listener to make sure that we're updating the product image correctly. So if I click on white, for example, then I wanna make sure I see the white t-shirt. Okay, cool. Now, one last thing that we're gonna to add to this file is some schema code. So I'm just gonna come down here, copy it, and replace this. All right, so you can see, I gave this a name, new collection list. It's a section. And then we have a couple settings. This collection, which I'll show you here in a moment in the customizer, allows us to select a uh, collection, which we then have access to all the products that we need. And then I also have this uh, number for a product limit. I mean, 
like I mentioned earlier, so that you can specify how many products you actually want to show. Okay, so if I save this, I'm going to go to the customize. All right, so now you'll see nothing here, but if I go to add section, new collection list is what it's called, and then you'll see it pops down right here. If I click into it, I need to select a collection. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to select the hydrogen because that's kind of the only collection I really have with any products. So I'll select that. I only want to display three for now, but you can change that to whatever you'd like. And now if I hit save, you'll see uh, it updates and voila, we can see it working successfully. So if I go back to the preview here, let me update and okay, cool. So we can see it right here and it looks like it's working correctly. We have our sizes here, we have our colors here. And again, this doesn't have updated photos, but this is still um, two technically different variants. I just wanted to use for testing. And now let's take a look at that data that I was telling you about. <clears throat> so take a look here at the products that we're getting back. There's nine variants because, right, we have three colors and three sizes, but I don't want to show nine different options for each thing. Like, I don't want to show nine repeat colors and nine repeat sizes. So rather, what we're doing is if we go back to our code, what we're doing is we are looping through these products and we're separating the option one and the option two from each other. So what is option one and what is option two? So if we go into the variant, you'll see that we have these options here. Option one, black, option two, small. And that's because in the uh, admin, I have the color first and the size second. So we have these two values here and there's not really a great way to store, at least that I found, the color that you want to use for your variant, like to actually display the correct gray or the correct white or green or blue, whatever color. So initially the approach I took was just to use this value, option one, directly. And that's still what the size is using. But what we're doing is we're going through and looping and we're separating those. So I have like this array for colors, array for sizes. That's how we're referencing the correct products and not referencing like nine variants on every single one. And you'll see here, so the sizes, we are literally just using the size that comes straight from option two, whereas here we're utilizing the meta fields. And if this is hard to follow, don't worry about it. Just get your code working. That's great. I wanted to give you an idea of why we're using the meta fields and not just data available here. Because initially, I, like I said, I just used this and downcased it, but I realized like a lot of products, people have like names like, you know, Arctic blue or forest green or whatever. And it's not just like red, blue, green. So that's not very scalable, right? So that is why we need to add some meta fields. So if you followed along this part, you're probably like, not seeing colors here and it's because we haven't gone through the step of creating the meta field yet i already had it created so let's go through and show you how to do that part so i'm going to come to the admin and i'm going to go to settings and i'm going to go to custom data and then i'm going to go to variants and then you're going to click add definition and this is the one i created so i called it variant color and that's going to give you this key right here custom dot variant underscore color and then this is one value and then um, once we create this then you can come back to your products and you can go into your product with variants and then go into one of the variants and you'll see right here at the bottom you have this meta field and you can do a hex color for whatever um, color you want which is much better than just using the option one value because that's what's going to be displayed to the user but that's not necessarily the color that you want so this makes it a lot easier to keep that straight and again like i mentioned this would be a great thing to do for the sizes as well, because you may want to have custom, maybe you want like XL and you don't want it to say like extra large or something like that. So you could repeat these steps almost exactly and um, create one for these sizes as well. Okay, so now if you go through each of your variants, you can add that color, click save. And then if you go back to the theme, you can refresh and you should see uh, successfully red, uh, rendering these variant swatches. So. Again, I'm clicking through here and it knows to update the product image based on the index that's set in our HTML. We display these right here. And then if we click on the title, it's gonna take us to the product page. And then if we click add to cart and I say I want the gray, it's gonna add gray to cart for us. 
So I know there's a lot of hairy JavaScript in there. I hope that kind of makes sense. I didn't want to dig too deep, but feel free to go through that as much as you'd like, but it should just work assuming that you have your, assuming you have your, your variant options in order from color to sizes, and then uh, also setting up your meta fields and naming those correctly. Just need to make sure the meta field key matches the meta field that's in the code. So this has been creating a variant option picker for the collection page. I hope it's been helpful and not too confusing. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.